What is going on, dudes and lady dudes? Welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, we've got new cards. New cards are always so flippin' hype. Um, especially when I get to do videos like this. Whoa, what am I doing? Uh, especially when I get to do videos like this where I haven't even seen what they do. I'm going to be reading them, reading them along with you and, and giving you my initial reactions, my impressions, everything like that. Now, keep in mind, these cards are from, I believe, the OCG's um, premium pack. Um, so we do not have a comparable set to that. So we don't know when we'll ever get these cards. But I still think it's cool to look at these new cards and just see what we will be getting at some point eventually down the line. So just new cards in general get me pumped. We're going to start here with an Altergeist card. This is Altergeist Fiji Alert. Okay. It's a level 4 water spellcaster effect monster with 1400 attack and 1200 defense. You can only use its effect once per turn and that effect reads... When an Altergeist monster is Link summoned to your field, and this card is in your hand, you can target one Link monster on the field, except that special summon monster, and special summon this card from your hand to your zone that that target points to. Also, that target is treated as an Altergeist monster for the rest of this turn. Um, the problem with this is Altergeist are just like... Konami keeps trying to put out Altergeist cards that seem to want to promote like a heavier Link summoning uh, portion for their deck, but then that's not the good version. And so it's just awkward, like, because they keep getting cards like this, but the deck really doesn't... Like, if you're going into your Links, you're winning the duel. Like, the duel's probably already out of reach for your opponent, and you're just trying to seal it up. So, like, this card does not make the difference until after everything's already been sealed up. So, uh, it's just not, not great, unfortunately. Next up, we have Morph King Stygial. Stygigel. Okay, he's a level 1 Dark Fiend Tuner effect monster. Okay, okay. 100 attack, 100 defense. Funky design. I can't tell what's his mouth and what is his anus in this picture. Whatever. <laughs> he has two effects and they can both only be uh, used once per turn each. Uh, if this card is normal or special summoned, you can target one other Fiend monster on the field in this level... Uh, this card's level becomes that monster's level, and if it does, gain 200 life points times its level. Also, you cannot special monsters from the extra deck this turn, except for Synchros. Okay. Interesting. And then the second effect says, during your main phase, you can special summon one Fiend monster with a lower level in this card from your hand. So it kind of promotes, like, a Synchro summon? Uh, this card didn't seem very good. Uh, it seems like... It's, this card seems like one of those weirdly specific cards that they would use in the anime. I'm sure some of these... Uh, I think I think the premium pack actually does use cards from the anime. This seems like one of those oddly specific cards that in one certain play in the anime, it was, like, amazing. And after that, like, it's not good. So, um, it's weird, but it, it's, it's interesting. Not terrible, but it's, like, just kind of specific, so... Not too worried about that guy. Moving on, we have Burning Soul, a quick play spell card that you can only activate one with its name per turn. If you control a level 8 or higher Synchro Monster, add one card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay. 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 Any level 8 or higher Synchro. All right. And if you do, immediately after this effect resolves, Synchro Summon one monster using monsters you control as materials. For the rest of this turn, after this card resolves, your opponent cannot target Synchro Monsters on the field with card effects. Oh, wow. Okay, this card's really actually spicy in my opinion. Um, you make you have to have a level 8 or higher Synchro. So it does take a little setup just for it to even like do anything. But then you just get to add any card from your graveyard, any singular card, from your graveyard back to your hand, and then... You, Immediately after this effect resolves, Synchro Summon. Huh, what if you can't Synchro Summon? Can you even activate this if you don't even have the means to Synchro Summon on activation? I don't actually know about that ruling um, there. but also, And then after that, your opponent can't target Synchro Monster with card effects for the rest of the turn. That's also very good because it's a quick play. You could set this, activate it, and then if you already had a big chunga Synchro Monster on the field, like how does your opponent out that from there? They might not be able to, or they probably won't be able to. Uh, this card's really interesting to me. I'm really curious about this card. We'll see if it has any, you know, we'll see if it comes up anywhere in the future. Next up, we have Hidden Fangs of Revenge, another quick play spell card. You can only activate one with its name uh, per turn. Cards and effects cannot be activated in response to this card's activation. Uh-oh, dangerous. When a monster declares an attack, destroy two set cards you control, and if you do, negate the attack. 
Then, if a monster card or cards was amongst the cards you destroyed, destroy as many monsters your opponent controls as possible whose attack is less than or equal to the defense of one of those monsters. And if you do, it becomes the end phase of this turn. <laughs> oh, gosh. This is such an anime card, it's actually wild. Like... It's, this is like a card they designed just to be used one time in the anime as like a crazy set card that saved a protagonist that was setting cards because he was like felt like he was in such a defensive position. That's really funny. Um, I don't think this card will really see too much play, but whatever. It's cool. It's it's spicy to say the least. Next up, we have Pendulum Shift, a normal spell card that you can only activate one per turn. Target up to two Pendulum monsters you control and place them in your Pendulum zones. Now that's really interesting. That's super interesting. It does take a little bit of setup because you gotta get them out on the field first, but just put them in the zones. That's really, really interesting to me. Huh. I, I'm sure they're like, maybe is there a pendulum strategy that particularly makes good use of this? Not that I can think of right out, like right off the top of my head, but wow, that's pretty spicy. That is pretty cool. Okay. I'm curious if this actually is good. It could be good at, at some points. I don't know. I don't know. Next up, we've got the Icebound God, a normal trap card. You can only activate this card's first... Uh, I'm sorry, this card's second effect once per turn. First effect. If there are two or more water monsters on the field, target one face-up monster your opponent controls. It cannot attack, and its effects are, remain, are negated while it remains face-up. That is awesome. That's all. What? That's so good already, right? Okay. Wait, why can you only use? Oh, if a level five or higher water monster or monsters is normal or special summoned to your field, and this card is in your graveyard, you can set this card back to your field. Ooh, but banish it if it leaves the field. So we have like an in. We have an attribute based lost wind. This card's so cool. I love this card. This is what I want to see to like, this is something really interesting. You have to have two or more, there have to be two or more water monsters on the field. So it can't be in, like, I don't know if this is good in like frogs, even though frogs are a more stunnish deck that might want to make use of a card like this, but I don't think they reliably put two waters on the field fast enough. That's the problem is they can do it, but they might not be able to do it fast enough to make this card live, um, you know, in time for when you might need this the most. But I do like that it not only, um, makes that monster unable to attack, but also its effects are negated permanently. That's clean. I think this is a, I think this is a good card. Like, assuming we're playing it in a, like a water deck that can pretty reliably put two waters on the field. I'm really interested to see if this card is uh, decent, and I love the recurability of it. Just summon any level five or higher water. Super easy to do in a good amount of water decks. Oh, that's another reason why it can't be really played in like frogs but that's really really interesting i like the card a lot that's probably my favorite card we've seen so far okay okay next up we have uh what do we have here let me move this guy over there we go next up we have dazzling lunar dragon selegra or selegrea a level six light dragon effect monster uh-oh 2400 attack 1000 defense oh see it's like the monarch stats that's interesting um, you can only use this card's third effect once per turn. You can normal summon or set this card without tributing. What? Wait. You could just you could just normal summon this. Okay. If this card was normal summon or set, by the way, in its first effect, its original attack becomes 15. Okay, it does lose the stat. During your main phase, during the main phase, sorry, either players, quick effect, you can target one monster your opponent controls with lower or equal t uh, attack to this card's. Return it to the hand. And if you do, gain control of the target or return this card to the hand if you do gain control of the target until the end phase. So this is like, this card's really cool. This card's kind of like, um, um, what am I thinking of? Uh, enemy controller almost, except instead of tributing, it goes to your hand so you can just use it again. This is really interesting, a really spicy effect. The problem is it does have to be weaker than you. Um, and if you did use the normal summon, it ha it's going to be 1500 mark or lower. But think about the decks we use now. I mean, um, you know, like Orcus as just part of their combo may have to, um, like what, use um, Harp to get out uh, Nightmare. Nightmare's a, 
like attack is less than fifteen hundred. You think of Salaman rates, almost everything under except for like Jack and Jaguar is under fifteen hundred. And foul, I guess, is under fifteen hundred attack. That works there. Strikers, everything is like fifteen hundred. This is really interesting. This could actually be something spicy. I think that's an interesting card for sure. Next up we have Silky the Living Recollection. It's a level 2 Dark Fairy Tuner effect monster with 800 attack, 0 defense. Has a once per turn effect. That effect says, if this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can target one face-up monster on each side of the field. Change them to face-up defense position. And if you do, special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. It's interesting. It takes setup. You, have, you and your opponent both have to have stuff. So going first, this doesn't like get itself on the board to just kind of, I don't know, like start getting you like into synchro plays. It's okay. It's just kind of mediocre. Next up we have Rhino Saber the Mad Dash Armory. This is a level 7 fire machine synchro effect monster with 2400 attack, 2100 defense. And its materials are 1 tuner and 1 plus non tuner. Also has 2 hard once per turn effects. First card, uh, first effect, sorry, says you can discard any number of cards as cost. Then this card will gain 7 or attack for each. That is a permanent gain, which is super interesting, because you can just make him. You could discard 4 cards out of your hand, make this guy gain 2,800, and go to 5,200. Definitely could set up some OTKs with this guy. Also, at the end of the battle phase, if this card battled, you could send this card to the graveyard as cost to special summon any number of monsters from your graveyard whose combined levels equal 7. But their effects are negated. That's so good! Is that not so good? You make this guy just to make a big beater, right? You go into battle phase, you beat over something, right? You discard a card or two so you can get over an ultimate falcon even, right? Then in your main phase two, you just, tr or at the end of the battle phase, you can just send this guy to the grave, reborn the two monsters you used to make him, and then you have the opportunity to go into a different rank seven, or synchro seven that's like maybe better for your opponent's turn, or you just make a link play. Make an IP Mascarina as long as you had any other monster on the field. You're kind of set up to like, get offensive and then get defensive with an interruption that's really decent right i don't know maybe maybe it's just not worth like this isn't as good right you're just throwing material like resources into the graveyard which isn't the greatest but i definitely think there could be some possible future for this card that card's really interesting to me then we have yami nabe party or potluck party it's a continuous spell card you can only activate one per turn um at the beginning of your battle phase, you can target one face-up monster you control. For the rest of this turn, your opponent selects the attack target of that monster, and if they do, that monster gains attack equal to its original attack during damage calculation only if it battles a monster. This card is terrible. This is such an anime card, but it's not very good. I wouldn't worry about that one. And the last card we have here is Kendo Cho Shorai, or Once More with Fury. It's a normal trap card. You can target... Oh, wait. Oh, okay, I thought this was... Never mind. Um, okay, you can only use the second effect of this card once per turn. Target one face-up monster your opponent controls. Equip this card to that target, and it gains 500 attack and defense. Okay. If this card is sent to the graveyard by the equipped monster leaving the field, draw one card. If this card was activated this turn, instead, you can draw two cards, then discard one card. Uh, this is pretty bad. I think this is a little bit too uh, niche and slow. And it's not worth just to draw, but it's like so slow, right? This definitely is not worth. I definitely would not be worried about this card. The ones that are super interesting, I think the Synchro is pretty interesting to me. This Dragon guy is pretty interesting. And then I would also say that this Trap card and this Pendulum spell card are interesting. Oh, and the Quick Play. Yeah, so there's a couple. There's a couple here that are more interesting than usual, usually with stuff like the Premium Pack. It's all anime stuff, so it tends to just be like super specific cards. But we got a couple here that are definitely interesting. So uh, give me your guys' thoughts down below. Let me know what you think about these cards. Which one of these are really good, and which ones of these are not so good? What do you want the most? Like, which one of these is spicy and the most to you? Mine is probably this Lost Wind card. I really, really like that design. But uh, yeah, I'm going to get the hell out of here, guys. Definitely subscribe to the channel if you want to see more news videos from me as news drops. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.